Hey everyone, um, very excited to be here. I know it's the last session of the day. Um, everyone's eager to get home or go for your dinner plans. Uh, so it won't take long, probably about 20 minutes or so for this session. Um, my name is Farhan. I am a cloud application architect with the professional services team in ASEAN. Um, my motivation today is to speak to you about chaos engineering and how you can practice it um, on Kubernetes specifically. Um, I'll then showcase a live demo um, where I'll fill some services and hopefully you, know, you guys can observe the impact in real time. Um, and then we'll wrap up the session. So everything fails uh, all the time. Uh, it's a very famous quote you might have heard, even in the previous session, uh, by our CDO, Dr. Werner Vogels. Um, initially, it might sound a bit pessimistic, right? I mean, if everything fails all the time, how could we ever build uh, reliable systems? Um, the truth is, you know, systems fail all the time, whether we like it or not. Um, so instead of you know, trying to prevent failures um, from happening altogether, we should actually embrace them as an inevitable part of our systems. Um, so uh, you know, it's a, really a proactive way into dealing with such failures. Um, so how we can actually do it is through chaos engineering. Um, basically, what, what it means in simple terms is uh, the practice of introducing failure, uh, intentionally introducing failure into a system to test its resilience, um, and ability to withstand um, turbulent conditions in production. Um, doing this, we can uncover unknown issues um, and expose blind spots in all layers of the stack um, and improve them before they actually become critical issues. So it's a proactive approach uh, to failure rather than a reactive one. Uh, one common misconception about chaos engineering is that uh, it's about randomly uh, breaking things without any clear goal or purpose. Uh, let me be clear, that's not what it's about. Um, it's a discipline practice for running these experiments uh, based on real-world failure scenarios um, to build confidence in our systems and not cause chaos for the sake of it. The key word here is discipline. Um, it's not a free-for-all where we can you know, just break things at will. We could, but uh, we shouldn't. So it's, an important, uh, it's important to approach it with um, a clear goal and purpose in mind um, so that we can gain more insights into our systems. So there are quite a number of benefits for different groups of people. Um, for developers, they can you know, identify issues with their code early, um, understand how their code behaves under specific failure scenarios, um, and identify bottlenecks and fix them before um, they actually get released to production. For SREs, um, they can identify weaknesses in their infrastructure and monitoring capabilities, um, and improve um, all of these you know, processes um, and configurations, uh, which would, you know, in return, reduce the time to detect um, and recover from their, their services, uh, service outages. So it benefits many groups of people, um, even you know, for your end users, your customers, um, they would experience you know, less likelihood of service outages. And it's um, a collaborative effort with every, uh, for every team, uh, shared responsibility where you know, everyone has to get together uh, and practice this uh, in the software development and delivery lifecycle. Uh, so these are the different uh, phases uh, in chaos engineering. Uh, basically, um, you start with the very core concept of steady state. Uh, so this is the state in which your system is deemed to be healthy, uh, basically what good looks like. Um, ideally, you know, in the steady state, you'll be able to map it to your golden signals if you're monitoring latency, success rate, throughput, for example. Um, and it can also be business metrics. Like if it's an order processing system, you could look like an orders per second. If, you know, if you have actually a specific trend uh, that deems the system is, uh, to be healthy. Uh, then next stage, we move on to hypothesis generation. Once you've understood you know, the steady state of your system, where we come up with various um, failure scenarios that you want to test. Uh, this could be based on you know, past incidents, um, or you know, known issues or weaknesses in the systems, or just based on our intuition of what you think could go wrong um, under this you know, various uh, failure scenarios. Uh, once you have that hypothesis, we move on to actually craft the experiment around that hypothesis, um, and then we carry out those experiments itself. Um, once we have you know, carried, out, carried out the experiment, we move on to the stage of learning analysis, and that is where you know, we would uh, basically observe the impact of the experiment against our steady state, uh, verify that against our steady state um, to actually deem whether the experiment is a success or a failure. Um, and if we find that you know, there are specific issues um, that goes against our hypothesis, then we would dive a bit deeper into you know, maybe the application code, um, the logs or metrics um, to find out what's really the problem. Once you have figured it out, you, you know, improve the system um, 
through those changes, and you rinse and repeat the process and run it again until you gain that level of confidence uh, that meets your, your hypothesis. Um, so, and you know, when you're introducing new changes to your system, that's where you also run the experiment again. Um, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an end-to-end -end, uh, life cycle. Uh, here are some key considerations when you're actually practicing it. Um, the first thing is on observability. Uh, without observability, there is no chaos engineering. This is a very famous saying. Uh, you've seen a session earlier uh, that Ali shared on observability. Um, basically, you know, that it's really a way for you to gain insights into your system um, with data and understand its overall health. Um, so without it, it's going to be quite a challenge to actually practice um, chaos engineering. Um, then you might want to run you know, all of these experiments in an uh, uh, environment that has parity production. So ideally in like your UAT, your staging environment, um, where it has a very um, close parity or like a one-to-one -one parity production. Um, because you know, when you, as you're running it for that environment, you're actually building confidence for that environment. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, we also need to consider the potential impact of um, running these experiments. Um, because you know, just like how a single spark could cause a wildfire, a single outage in a small component could actually cause bigger outages in you know, other components, other systems. Uh, could cause like really cascading issues. Um, so we need to be able to control the blast radius um, of these experiments so that it prevents itself from spreading um, to other components. Um, if you are just starting out, we should you know, also start small, target just one or two microservice um, or component and just target a simple failure scenario just to get um, a bit more confidence in the process and the tooling. Uh, once you have that confidence, you would then branch out to more complex scenarios. Uh, we should also define limits and constraints uh, on these experiments so that um, they remain within safe boundaries, uh, just like how you know, uh, guardrails on a highway prevent cars from veering off the road. Um, in this context, you're basically uh, prevent, you're preventing the experiment from um, uh, causing a, a wide outage um, to, 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 to the business. So we should actually introduce like, a stop condition, if we can, um, that acts as a like, big red button to actually halt the experiment uh, if you observe that it's causing quite a big outage to the business. Uh, let's take a look at some of the most common experiments um, for Kubernetes. Uh, first one is on port termination. This is the simplest one. It involves forced or graceful termination of you know, one or more ports. Um, doing this, we can actually observe um, how our systems handle um, um, this sort of uh, terminations through like, port evictions or you know, just unhealthy holes in general. I um, mean, basically, we can actually verify our replica availability and uh, auto recovery mechanisms and deployment sanity as well. Uh, you'll see this experiment in the demo later on. Uh, then we have noisy neighbor as well. Um, it involves introducing a workload that consumes a large amount of CPU or memory uh, resources uh, on the same node or different port uh, in the cluster. Uh, basically, this would um, uh, cause you know, the different workloads to compete for resources. Um, and you can actually observe how your workload reacts to, to that sort of situation um, and verify its resource limits um, and allocation configuration. Now, for injecting these sort of uh, experiments, you can always start with you know, just doing it directly in a console, on a terminal, using kubectl uh, with various other tools. Um, but of course, you know, if you're just um, doing that manually on a console, it, it won't actually scale, right? So um, that's where you know, the right tools come into play. Um, there are many out there. Um, you might have heard of Kiosk Monkey which is uh, a tool developed by Netflix. Uh, it's a very famous one. Um, then there is Litmus Chaos and Chaos Mesh, which is uh, focused mainly on Kubernetes experiments. Um, they provide a lot of experiments out of the box. Um, they also provide a GUI, a web portal, for you to actually um, log into and visualize these uh, workflows and experiments. Um, then we have our managed service on AWS called the Fault, Fault Injection Simulator um, that also integrates nicely with um, Litmus Chaos and Chaos Mesh. So we'll use uh, Limus Chaos for, for the demo later on, um, like I mentioned. Uh, it actually exposes uh, metrics that we could actually collect and interleave with our operational monitoring metrics, um, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, I'll show you in, in, in a second. It also has um, a public registry for experiments called Chaos Hub. So we'll actually you know, consume those experiments from there and create our own workflow. Um, we can also take a GitOps approach into it by just you know, doing it all declaratively through YAML files and manifest. Um, but for the, uh, for the demo, I'll just show how we can do it directly on the web UI console. So let's move on to the demo. 
Um, if you have your mobile phone, feel free to scan this QR code. Uh, basically, this is the web application that we'll be injecting chaos on. Uh, I'll just describe what, uh, how the web application is deployed. Um, basically, it's just a React app deployed on EKS cluster. Uh, the backend is just two Go, Golang-based uh, HTTP microservices called Encounter API and Like API. Uh, they both serve client-side requests. Um, they store and, retrie uh, store and retrieve data from Postgres, um, as well as uh, Redis. Uh, Redis is used for uh, locking and also used to, um, for atomic counting. So I will now share my screen. Okay, I've seen, yep, there's quite a lot of likes, yep. So just feel free to like your favorite uh, service <laughs> that you use to run your workloads. The idea is just for you guys to generate some traffic into web application. Um, as you can see on the left here, um, we would see actually the port that's serving the request um, for, for the like service. And we can also see below here the uh, port that's serving the request for the counter service. So every time you refresh the page, for example, it adds a count um, to the page view and that's handled by the counter microservice. Um, so this is just a simple web application. Now let's talk about the steady state of this web app. Um, you know, from an end user perspective, you're able to view the number of likes, you're able to like um, your favorite service uh, without any issues, no disruptions whatsoever. Uh, from one perspective, um, it's just a HTTP microservice, so we have some uh, uh, signals that we are collecting um, in terms of latency um, and also um, the success rate, which is just based on whether or not we have any server-side error codes in the responses. So that's the steady state. Um, there is no, you know, the success rate is at 100%, which I will show you later on. Uh, now, if you to create a hypothesis around an experiment, um, let's just say we are going to use the port termination one. Um, my hypothesis is that, you know, if let's say 50% of the uh, like service and counter service ports are you know, terminated every second for some reason due to port evictions, right? There shouldn't be any disruption uh, from the end user perspective. There shouldn't be any. Um, um, issue in terms of my steady state metrics. The success rate shouldn't be affected. Uh, we shouldn't see any divergence from the steady state metrics. So that's my hypothesis. So let's create an experiment on that. I have with me this chaos center, which is litmus chaos. Basically, I installed this on my cluster and it exposes this uh, web UI portal. I can use this to craft the experiments. So I'm gonna just schedule a chaos scenario now. I'm targeting the cluster itself. And then you're going to specify it to use the experiment from Chaos Hub. Um, I'm going to now just put a title, just call it unstable API ports, this uh, hypothesis. And then I'm going to add a Chaos experiment here based on that. And we're just going to be targeting counter service and like service, and we're just going to do a port deletion. So we're just going to search for this available experiment that's provided. It's just called uh, port delete. So I'm going to use this one and set the appropriate configuration. So I'm gonna select the namespace of which my ports are running in, the likes web app. Um, the label will be, of course, counter service. And here is where you can actually define a probe. So this is very important, especially in like, uh, for chaos toolings. Um, usually they'll provide support for integrations with your observability tooling so that you can have an automated way of you know, verifying the steady state of your application as the experiment is running. Um, so if you have like Prometheus that uh, has your, uh, stores the metrics, you can actually query Prometheus. But for this uh, demo, I'm just gonna skip the probe and we're gonna rely manually on, uh, to, to visualize it on the dashboard. So let's skip next and then um, I'm gonna run this for about a minute. Uh, run this for every second. And we're gonna target 50% of the ports, uh, like I mentioned, based on the hypothesis and then we're gonna click done. So this is now done for that microservice. I'm gonna add another one. Uh, this is for like service. So similar concept of configuration, um, likes web app, and the like service, and then we're gonna skip the probes, run it for a minute, every second, 50% of the ports, um, go next, finish. Now you see that it's, run, it's gonna be running sequentially, that's not what we want. So let's modify this to run it in parallel. Um, so think of it like Chaos Lego, you can actually create very complex workflows in terms of experiments. Um, so now it's gonna be running this to port deletion in parallel. It's gonna click next, and here you can actually define the weights that you set for each experiment. Um, if you think that you know, port deletion um, for you know, the uh, like service is, you know, holds more weight than the other one, the other service you can actually adjust it accordingly. I'm just gonna set it to its defaults. Here you can run it in, on, like, on Shellu. I'm gonna run it now. And here you can also export it to YAML file, take a de decorative approach, um, and push it to your Git repository and have it uh, run there directly, but I'm gonna skip this one. 
and just click Finish. So now this scenario is created. So what it's going to do is it's going to actually install the Chaos Experiments on the cluster itself. Uh, while that's happening, it'll take a yeah, couple of seconds. Um, I'm going to split my screen over here. Uh, let's observe um, the monitoring tool. So I have Grafana on the right, Manage Grafana. Uh, you might have seen in Ali's session about Manage Grafana. Here, I'm actually collecting um, some metrics. Um, here, we are collecting metrics on the light service. We can actually see that there's about you know, 36 requests coming in per second. Um, Earlier on, we had about you know, 150 uh, requests per second. Everything looks good, right? The success rate is at 100%. Um, there is no um, other uh, HP issues. Uh, it's all status 200s. Um, and we're going to observe as, as the experiment start, start, starts to kick in whether there's going to be any impact. So remember my hypothesis is that there's, there shouldn't be any disruption um, to the services because you know, we should have you know, enough replicas to be serving the requests. Um, and let, let's uh, wait for a while and let, let's observe. Uh, while that's happening, just feel free you know, to continue set, uh, hitting the like button to generate more traffic into the application. So strangely, we're actually seeing some issues, right? Um, if you look, you're on the mobile app, I mean, on the mobile uh, web page, you can actually see some API errors appearing on the web page on the left. So, you know, it's actually going against our hypothesis, right? Initially, we thought, you know, there shouldn't be any issue, right? If you have 50% of the bots are affected, you should still be serving the request. So let's now do something, right? Um, I have here on the button on the right, uh, top right, called Chaos. I'm just going to enable this one. Um, so you see that uh, you have actually this red region. Um, so this is something that I mentioned was pretty cool, right? We're actually collecting some metrics from Litmus Kiosk. Uh, we're interleaving them with our operational metrics. So you can actually see um, you know, which point of time, as the experiment is running, whether or not our metrics are uh, sort of impacted by the experiment. So as you can see here, as soon as the experiment uh, started running, uh, our success rate dropped for the microservices. Um, and if we observe the, you know, potentially why it could, be, uh, could be the case, if you look at the HTTP request, um, if we filter it by you know, the error code, we're actually seeing a spike, uh, spike in 503 errors, right? Um, which is basically service unavailable. So um, you know, based on my intuition, you know, in Kubernetes, if you get a 503, typically uh, it could mean that the service is unable to find a port with that specific label, or it's just unable to find a port that's ready. So we know that you know, we have been terminating ports, um, and for some reason, there's just not enough ports um, to be serving a request, um, although it's just 50% of the ports that's impacted. So I'm just going to check my configuration right, um, for, for the microservice itself. So I'm going to go to the uh, terminal. Let's go do kubectl get horizontal port or scalar for like swap app. So I have a horizontal port or scalar configured um, for this one. Just one second. Yeah, time to up. Okay, so we see that the horizontal port or the scalar configuration is as such, right? Counter service and like service, the minimum number of ports set to one, replicas is set to one. So, you know, obviously, it's just doomed for failure, right? If you are running a port termination experiment on 50% of ports, and, you know, that's basically the, um, we don't have enough replicas to be serving requests. So I'm just gonna patch this one. So we've pretty much figured out the issue. So we're going to increase the uh, minimum replicas to three for both the counter service and like service. And let's just verify that real quick. Yep, the minimum is set to three. So let's go back to the split screen here. Um, and shortly, we should start seeing um, responses coming from you know, all three ports. As you can see, that we are receiving responses from all three ports. I'm going to rerun the experiment um, just to verify it again um, based on my previous hypothesis to see if it stands. It's going to install the chaos experiments again. Uh, while that's happening, just generate some traffic. Uh, you should be able to see now that you know, the responses are coming from all three different ports. So it kind of makes sense, right? Earlier, we just saw one specific port that's serving requests, so it was doomed for failure anyway. Um, so while that's happening, um, it, it's going to install the experiments uh, on the cluster, so it will take a bit of time. And ideally, we should not see any impact to our application from an end user perspective and from a monitoring perspective, we shouldn't see any um, drop in the success rate metrics. So let's give it a bit of time. Um, in the meantime, I'll just speak a bit about the, you know, the, uh, how I actually spun up this cluster. Uh, we were at the session earlier with Rio. Uh, he was introducing EKS Blueprints. Um, I actually spun up the cluster with EKS Blueprints. It was really easy to use uh, with Terraform um, and you know, tools like um, Argo CD and Open Telemetry is something that is uh, supported um, by the blueprints to enable it. So it's just a matter of just toggling it and it actually managed to install it for me. So that's how I actually can collect metrics really easy um, um, and integrate it for, for this demo app. 
Um, you also see you know, metrics on this uh, Grafana dashboard. Uh, these are all sort of service mesh level metrics that I'm actually scraping uh, from the open telemetry and then ingesting to manage Prometheus. Um, so like I mentioned, you know, observability is super important. And without it, we, we, we are unable to actually verify the impact of such experiments. So as you can see, I think the pod deletion is actually happening. So I'm just going to look at the Argo CD, for example. Yeah, it's actually like terminating pods every second, 50% uh, of the pods. And then what we can see so far is that there's just no impact, right, to the application. You're actually able to like it. Early on, we were seeing like API errors, you know, appearing on the app. Um, from a monitoring perspective, as you can see, the experiment has started. Uh, we are seeing an interleaved metrics here. Um, we are seeing that, you know, all the metrics are, you know, so far it's status 200s, right? The, the responses are status 200s. We are not seeing any 503 so far as soon as the experiment started. So, you know, hi our hypothesis is correct, um, you know, that basically 50% of ports are, you know, impacted. Uh, we are not going to see any disruptions. Um, but in the initial um, run, we saw some disruptions and we actually found the issue could, to be a replica availability issue. So we increased the minimum number of replicas, we ran it, and now it's, it's solved. So that's basically a, a very simple experiment. I'm going to go back to my slides and wrap up this session. Okay, so you saw a very simple experiment, um, port termination. Um, of course, there could be more complex uh, experiments where you target specific components like we have in that architecture. We have like Redis, you could actually just target Redis, create a hypothesis around it, could introduce latency into the mix as well. Um, but yeah, that was a very simple experiment. So some key takeaways, um, like I mentioned, obviously is super important. Uh, without it, you're basically trying to verify something without data. Um, and then on the topic of, you know, uh, basically outcomes from, from doing such experiments, you can actually reduce your mean time to detect and mean time to recover. Um, and you know, if you integrate it with your CI CD practices before you actually deploy the production, you can actually discover all those issues early um, and fix them before they go to production. So you can actually be a stage in your whole CI CD process and practice continuous chaos in the process. Um, so that, that is all. Uh, if you're interested you know, uh, to get started, feel free to reach out to us at AWS Professional Services or uh, reach out to the solutions architects to, to learn more um, about chaos engineering. Uh, if you're looking to build skills, visit Skill Builder. Uh, we have you know, online courses for you. Uh, thank you again for attending. We appreciate our feedback. So remember to you know, fill up that survey if you can. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, thank you so much for attending. Uh, I have uh, pushed some of the configuration to the GitHub repository, so feel free to access it uh, if you are interested in the demo that I shared earlier on today. Um, feel free to connect with me as well on my socials if you found the session to be interesting. Uh, thank you guys so much for attending. Thank you.